Hello, and welcome to the 196th episode of Gaming Talk. On this episode, I'm going to be discussing and giving my thoughts on Transliminal Beyond the Backrooms. Let's get into it. I don't do a lot of horror. Whether it's games, movies, or shows, it's not something I really care for. But the backrooms and liminal spaces in general is something that I have a very great interest in. But I didn't want to just play any backrooms game. As there's plenty of them. I wanted to play the best Backrooms game, and that is what led me to Transliminal. Now, this is an early access game, and that's not something I usually go for, but it's pretty good for being an early access game. I definitely would not say that it's all polished, but there's not any major game-breaking bugs of any kind, at least that I experienced anyway. Honestly, there's a lot that I like about this game, and the biggest thing is that while there are entities in it, they're not up in your face chasing you all the time. That's the sort of thing that puts me off playing other games like Escape the Backrooms. Plus, of the entities there are, they don't go the route of having things like the Bacteria Monster, which I think is the Howler, I don't know. Or one of those big and loud entities made famous by Kane Pixel's YouTube channel. Uh, the entities in Transliminal are there in a subtle way most of the time. Smilers can kind of give themselves away because you can see their tails hanging down or just see their faces, period. Uh, but that doesn't bother me. Plus, of the entities there are, you're most likely going to get attacked by Smilers over and over. More so than anything else. My first run, uh, I never saw any dollars, the ones that take stuff from your inventory, or the shadow entity, or dolls, but that's because I never made it to the playground on my first run. I also never found the backpack or phase emitter or any of the keys in my first run. Um, but that's another plus of the game, is that my two runs were very different. Sure, I found pretty much all of the tapes in both runs but you know the first run I got all the phone calls but I did not get a single one in the second run. I found more of the random trinkets like the dice at magic eight ball in the second run and I managed to find the backpack on the second run too compared to the first one. Now I still never found any of the keys or the phase emitter in my second run but I'm hoping that someday I'll find them. (laughs) Also, the game being procedurally generated really helps everything feel different, even in the same run. I like the addition of the sanity um, and how it's displayed with the like static effects on the camera, making things appear different. Like, if your sanity is in the red in the pool rooms, the water will be blood, for example. Um, also, for example, if your sanity is in the red in level 0, you'll see holes in the floors and walls, there are a number of ways to decrease your sanity, but the easiest is the tapes that will do it quickly and the same for increasing your sanity. It's a neat system and I like how it affects the environment around you. They really nail those feelings of being lost and trapped and the dread of feeling being watched all the time or the sensation of wondering what could be around the corner or down that dark hallway. Now I know I've been pretty positive about the game so far, that surely there has to be something that I really don't like about it. Well, I'd say there are some issues, but not huge glaring ones. I'll admit, I think that the smilers are kind of unfair. Without the phase emitter, you're pretty much helpless against them. Now according to the game guide, you can just turn around and turn back and they disappear. But I found that that only works in a specific way, which is they have to be chasing you already. Then you have to turn around and run forward and then turn back and then they'll be gone. And even then, that doesn't always work because they can somehow get you from behind. So like, yeah, the only reason I find them unfair um, to go with that is because they can also just like go through walls. And I've also found instances d- during the game where like one of them will get me and then I'll respawn and then immediately one of them will get me. 
Or another one that happened to me is the first time I was in the elevator, the doors opened into, I believe, the the pipes area. And as soon as those doors opened, a smile would just, boom, got me. Um, and like I said, it's unfair, too, that they can just go right through walls. Um, and I really think that that's something that needs to be fixed going forward in the game. But finally, I just have questions. According to the guide, there's two endings, which I have done both. Um, one where you collect seven phone calls and you get the async ending. Um, and the other involves, and there's multiple ways to do, to do this, but you end up in Mother's Realm. And basically she talks to you and then makes you one of her children. They're both really weird, but... Um, it, it, it's weird in the sense that, like, you know, the game doesn't have much in terms of storytelling, but both endings are weird. I also find it weird how the mother ending is considered the bad ending, even though, like, I think they're both bad, because the ASIC ending, you get trapped in the future. So I'm like, I don't know, I think they're equally bad endings, but... Anyway, um, yeah, uh, other question, um, kind of going, like, with this is, so you collect the seven phone calls, you get the async ending, but when you get that seventh phone call, you get this text saying a new path opens. Same for the way I got the mother ending was, I found a doll head, and when I picked it up, it was like, a new path opens. But I've had that happen when I pick up tapes, too. I pick up a tape and it says, a new path opens, and I just don't get why. Is there some secret third ending related to collecting tapes? I, I, I don't know, but it happens in the game. I find it interesting how they divide the endings where getting trapped in the future is the good ending. And Mother's Children one is the bad ending, which I've already said that. Um, but yeah. Overall, Transliminal does a lot of things that not only do most other Backrooms games not do, but most other horror games don't do. As someone who doesn't enjoy a lot of horror, I really enjoyed my time with this one, honestly. Transliminal Beyond the Back Rooms is a good and enjoyable game. And that's all I have, so if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for listening, and...